All right, so today we are going to be doing something pretty exciting and quite a bit different for us, and that is we are heading out to the El Dorado National Forest where we are going to get a permit so that we can go out into the woods, uh, find our Christmas tree, and then cut it down. Yeah, this is something I've always wanted to do, and I'm really excited to start the tradition and uh, have the Griswold Christmas uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> With a Nate <Nathie> spin. <laughs> yeah, so last year we did go to a small Christmas tree farm in Wisconsin where you can cut your own tree, and that was pretty cool. But I just thought it would be nice to actually go into the National Forest and cut our own tree. So we originally wanted to go to Tahoe, but yesterday before we could get down there, they actually sold out of all their permits. But luckily El Dorado still has some, so that's where we are going. But first we have to stop at Home Depot, which is actually where we're parked at, because we need to pick up a handsaw. And then we'll hit the woods and find our tree. Yep. All right, so we left Home Depot and we got our saw, so we're ready to go as far as getting the tree. The next step was to come to the El Dorado National Forest office, which we just got done inside. I went in there and there was a gentleman who actually met me on the way in and he explained all the rules of it first before I went inside, just to let, let you know, hey, this is the rules, these are the regulations. If you're not comfortable with them, you might as well not even go inside and get your permit. Of course, we were comfortable with them. So we went inside and uh, it was $10 per tree. You could get a maximum of up to four trees. We're actually getting two trees. We're gonna put one inside the RV and then we wanted another one for right outside the door of the RV. So we ended up getting uh, two permits for those. And uh, there's some information that you need to have on you at all time. Uh, first are these two pink uh, stickers here. Now, what we'll do is once we do find our trees, we'll put the pink stickers on each tree and then that'll represent to law enforcement that, hey, these are legit. Second is you need to have your permit with the rules on you at all time. And then third is the actual map uh, of the National Forest, which this is a specific map that they use. They said it probably won't be a very useful to us, but you have to have it on you when you're out hunting for your tree. So we have all this and good to go there. And then lastly, they gave us this little map, which basically shows the National Forest. Now everything in green is where we can go to get our tree. Uh, the white squares are actually private property, so you can't go there, but anywhere in green you can go. And then they have the south side of the 50 and the north side of the 50. Now this map's really cool and they have it set up pretty awesome as well because they have uh, your little scan code over here, which you can scan this and uh, download the application for it. And then you can actually pull this map up on your phone if you want. So that's pretty helpful. But uh, we are currently over here off the map. We're gonna take the 50 and we're gonna come up to Kybers. Now, Kybers is a really small town. When we went to Tahoe with our friends a couple weeks ago, when you're driving through, they have a sign that says, welcome to Kybers. And uh, right underneath it on the same sign, it says, now you're leaving Kyber. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, we're gonna go up to there and we're gonna hit Silver Fork Road and we're gonna come out here and uh, find our tree. Now, when I was talking to the uh, Forest Service person in there, they actually did inform me that there are a couple campgrounds in here and you can't cut a tree within, I think it's 250 feet, she said, of the campgrounds. So we're just gonna have to keep an eye out for that. But other than that, we're gonna head out to the woods with our saw and uh, find ourselves some Christmas trees. Right, so we made it into the El Dorado National Forest. We drove about nine to 10 miles off Silver Fork Road and then just kind of pulled over. Yeah, it's gonna be getting dark here in a couple hours. So we don't have a whole lot of time. So let's go get our tree. Let's do it. Zuh.
the tree hunt continues. We just found the perfect one, but it actually was pretty close to uh, Sky Fork Ranch, which you're not supposed to cut within a certain distance, and it just seemed a little too close for us, so we're moving on and trying to find the best one. All right, so we found our first tree. It is right here behind me in the bushes, of course. Uh, it is within 10 feet of the other trees and also the diameter of the trunk is less than six inches, so we are good to go. We're really excited. We don't know if this is gonna be living room or outside, but one tree down, one to go, and probably 35 minutes worth of light. So it was much easier to get to from this side. So it looks pretty full, right? It looks good enough. I think that'll be cute outside. All right. All right, so you just saw us cut down our first tree and we are running on low on time before we have to get our second, but we did want to point out a couple things. One is that the rules do require that when you're cutting down your tree, you cut the trunk as low to the ground as possible, which we did there. And another thing is that when you're looking for your tree and picking it, you want to make sure that it's not dry uh, and dying. And one good way to do that is to grab onto the needles here and pull a little bit and make sure none of the needles come off with your hand. Uh, also too, when you're out picking up your own, uh, you don't have a shaking machine and uh, the little netting that they can put around your tree. So we're just going to give it a real good shake and then throw it in the back of the car and then head out and try to find the next one before we run out of light.
All right, so as you can see, we did get one tree on our first day out Christmas tree hunting. And uh, once we got home and we started really looking at it, we realized that it's definitely a really crooked, grinchy sort of tree. <laughs> <laughs> we love it anyway. And it's going to be great for outside the RV. However, on that day, we were running out of light as the day continued on. Uh, and instead of pushing through and finding just whatever tree, we decided that we would come back and make another day of it. Yeah, we really enjoyed looking for the tree. It was so much fun just hiking through the forest. Um, we actually did a lot more driving that first time just because we were running out of light. But uh, it was just funny because we would see a tree and be like, oh, it's perfect. And then we'd go over to it and realize it was like 10 or you know, 15 feet tall and we need something more like five or six. <laughs> so, but that's what happens when they're surrounded by even taller trees. But um, They we, look a lot smaller than they are when you get up close to them. Yeah, but we had so much fun that we're like, you know what? We're not going to stress about trying to find a second tree for inside. This is so much fun, and it's a good excuse to get outside anyway and just walk around the forest. So let's just come back another day and then, you know, try and make a day out of it and find our second tree. So <laughs> <laughs> we did that. Uh, actually, yesterday was day number two on the Christmas tree hunt. And uh, we decided to come to a different part of the El Dorado National Forest, uh, one that actually comes through a uh, little town of Georgetown. Uh, it which... was like 45 minutes away versus the other one that was like an hour and a half. So we thought, well, this way we don't have to drive as far. Exactly. Well, then we drive through Georgetown, which was an awesome little town. Uh, just a lot of history there, you could tell. Um, and once we got through there, we stopped at the ranger station. And it comes to find out that here uh, at the El Dorado National Forest near Georgetown, a lot of it, once you leave Georgetown and start driving through it, driving through it is actually private land that's owned by a logging company. Uh, so we actually had to drive like another hour um, through the National Forest in order to get somewhere where we could cut down trees. No. Yeah. And the thing is, is that since we weren't driving as far, we actually did a little bit of work in the morning before we left, thinking we were going to still have enough time, and not realizing we were going to have to drive that extra hour. And on top of that, we found out there was going to be there was snow, so we were actually driving slower. And we were kind of like, and then with all of the um, so much of the land being um, privately owned, we were kind of confused by where we were at and if we could cut something down or not. And then we got to this area like right pretty much right where it opened up where we could start cutting. We are maybe like, what, nine or 10 miles away and the roads were just really bad and we were nervous that if we went past that, by the time we came back, it would be nighttime or it would start to get dark and it would get cold and then we just didn't know how safe Really it would be. what it boils down to is that road had a lot of snow packed down on it from a previous snow that was like four days old. And what's happening is every day it's getting up to about 45 degrees and it's kind of melting a little bit. And then at night it's refreezing. Well, the thing was is since we had done that work in the morning and we came out a little bit later, it was probably about 2 30 3 o'clock when we were going to be driving over that uh going another 10 miles through the windy roads which is really slow paced and i felt like by the time we were going to be on the way back it was going to be dark and uh, it was already probably about 36 degrees so i was worried about us coming back with only having a two-wheel drive vehicle that coming up the hills would be a little bit too slippery and we might uh not make it so we decided yeah. to actually turn back and come back today yeah <laughs> which is day number three <laughs> we did get out yesterday yesterday and walked around some areas because it, it was really nice and it just smelled so good being by all the evergreen trees but we were just like you know what let's just come back tomorrow <laughs> at least now we know we can check the weather conditions we can get here earlier kn knowing we're gonna have to drive through this and make sure that we're back before it gets dark or before it even like starts to get a lot colder so that's what we did today Yep, so anyway, we are in the El Dorado National Forest and we are right next to Loon Lake, uh, which is an extremely beautiful lake, but we are gonna get out in the woods and try to find that perfect tree for the inside of our RV. Yeah, now some people may consider this somewhat of a failure considering we've been out here three times, but for us, it's been an adventure and it's just been really fun. I mean, really, we would have been fine with even just the one tree, but we just thought this was a lot of fun and why not? So yeah. I'm excited to uh, get out and see if we can find that next tree. Let's get it. Do you like the snow?
Well, we found our tree. It's right there behind <laughs> us. Uh, uh, there. <laughs> so we're going to cut it down and get out of here before it gets dark. We actually have time, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, let's make this happen. So pretty. Right. Christmas tree hunt 2017 has wrapped up in the El Dorado National Forest. We successfully found the two trees that we thought were perfect for our RV. Uh, now, if you guys are considering taking an approach like this in the future, we would 110% recommend it. Even though we had our uh, obstacles to overcome and it took us three days to get our two trees, we absolutely love just getting out in the National Forest and looking for them. So definitely recommend it if that's something you guys are thinking about. Now, more specifically, if you are going to be going in the El Dorado National Forest north of the 50, entering in through the town of Georgetown, we'd suggest that when you get done with your beginning long drive and you have a choice to go left up to Loon Lake or take a right on Ice House Road, we'd suggest taking a right because on our way out on day number three, we couldn't go back the way we came because the roads were too icy. So we ended up having to go a different way. And what we found was that down that road, there was literally a slew of trees that would have worked all over the place. So you might have a little quicker results if you go that direction. But anyway, we ended up bringing our Crooked Grinch tree inside. And that's mainly because the tree we got on day number three was a little too wide once we got it in. And we just loved the way that it looked the way it was. So we didn't want to trim it up to make it fit. But we did do something really cool to it, and that is flock it. And that's the first time we've ever done a flocking of a Christmas tree. So check back here soon for a video where we're going to show you how we went through that process. I think it turned out really well. And then also check back soon. We're going to be going, giving our RV Christmas home tour uh, here really soon. And you'll be able to see both the trees in their spot and what they look like, as well as the rest of our Christmas decorations. But anyway, that about wraps it up from our experience getting our Christmas trees in the El Dorado National Forest. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them below or visit us at mountainmodernlife.com. And as always, thank you much for swinging by today.